All right, we're here. Welcome, welcome. I'm gonna be, I don't have an assistant today to help me admit people, so hopefully I can um, not get too distracted by this box. Um, okay, so we are going to go ahead and start. Welcome to Maximize Your Speed Now, 11 Ways to Get Faster. Um, so obviously there are probably, you know, thousands of ways to get faster in triathlon, but these are just ones that are top of mind for me in my program with my triathletes that I work with. Um, and, but this is just touching the surface, honestly, <laughs> because the more I got into this, I actually completely changed it last night. So I had 11 yesterday and then these are like, I added like five more. Okay. <laughs> so then I had to like slim down and, and kind of, you know, rearrange, but thanks for being here. Congratulations. Um, I'm excited to share this information and this is interactive at the right moment. So I'm gonna to get to a few slides and then I'm gonna ask you guys for your input. So please grab a pen and paper. You might, are definitely gonna learn something in this class. I mean, some of my athletes who are my current athletes are on here and they're gonna learn something. And then if you don't know me that well, I'm gonna introduce myself in a minute, but I also wanna learn who you are. But I do suggest, you know, maybe taking some notes. There's gonna be at least one or two things that you will be able to learn from this presentation. Um, Let's see. Okay, obviously you're here. Who wants to get faster, right? Who thinks it's gonna be difficult or hard? That's probably the most intimidating thing when it comes to getting faster. You think, oh, it's, it's just too hard or I'm gonna to have to suffer or like Urs, one of my clients was just saying, you know, no pain, no gain, but it really doesn't have to be that way if you do it correctly. Um, if you do it in a periodized manner where you're building up to the suffering, <laughs> it really makes a huge difference as far as, um, as, far as um, the suffering or the pain. Ideally, there's no real pain. You actually feel stronger from the efforts that you're giving, okay? So who's ready to learn the truth that it's not about pain and suffering, but it's actually about um, enjoying the process? Okay, so here's a, a chance for you guys to, to let me know who's here. I see everybody's name, so you don't have to put your names, but in the chat box, if you'd be willing to write down of the three sports, which one is your biggest limiter, okay? So your swim, you know, usually, I would say swimming is the most common limiter for most people because they come to me maybe from a running background and they're a runner and they wanna mix it up, um, or they're cyclists, and they want to learn how to run. So sometimes the run is a limiter. And then sometimes it's cycling. They've never had a, a bicycle before, right? So go ahead and type in the chat box for me, just so I can kind of see, and then I'll kind of focus my talk about the different limiters. But um, the swim, the bike, or the run, and then what's your goal by, for the end of 2020, right? It's not over yet, you guys. <laughs> it's not over, even though a lot of people would really, really like it to be. Like, I can't tell you how many times a day I hear, you know, when's 2020 going to be over? But it's not. We got three more months. Okay, we have October. Well, at least a half of October. We've got November and we've got December, right? So why not finish strong? So now I have to find my chat box. Where is it? Where are you, chat box? Hmm. Okay, there it is. Sorry. Like I said, I have no assistant today. Let me find my chat box. And just see, here we go. All right, so the run, I've got Olympic try in November, love that goal. Run, oh, lots of runners that have that as their limiter. Okay, swim, bike. Okay, cool, so we have a little bit of everything. Swim is usually the most common one, so I'm kind of surprised that run is more be, being more um, listed here. So cool, and any, any goals? So I don't, I see one goal, the Olympic try in November, which I know who that's for. Um, but, you know, even if you're not sure of a goal, maybe if you, you know, just close your eyes for a second and say, you know, if in an ideal situation and, and maybe if I hadn't taken so much time off, you know, what would I want to do by the end of 2020? There's still time, you guys. There's still time. Okay. So go ahead and um, keep, um, sorry, hopefully that's it. Okay. So go ahead and um, keep typing in the group chat your goals for 2020 and what your biggest limiter is for um, swim, bike, or run. Okay, so some of you guys don't know me, some of you do, but I hope it's okay to tell you a little bit about myself. So I'm a native Miamian. Um, my grandparents came here in the 1900s 
and my great grandfather actually helped build the railroad to Key West. So I am a Miam Uh-in. That's what we call ourselves. Um, and I have a 14-year-old daughter who is a retired triathlete. She's done about nine triathlons when she was between seven and nine years old, and she's over it. So um, <laughs> now she plays tennis and does boxing. So I'm pretty proud of her about that. But I've been in the sport for 23 years. This is my 23rd year, so I'm pretty stoked about it still. And that's, it even surprises me that I still love the sport as much as I do. Um, so it's my lifestyle, it's my passion. And I can just tell you, I got off the bike today doing bridge repeats and I felt super strong and super motivated. And I was like, I'm so lucky. Like you, we watched the sunrise and it was the most beautiful day out there. And so triathlon is a lifestyle that I really want to, you know, get more people involved in just because that's how I love it so much, right? So that's my purpose, that's my passion. And I was one of the first 60 USA Triathlon certified coaches in the US. So in 1999, I became a certified USAT triathlon coach. Um, and there was only, there was one class before me and then my class of 30. And there's a handful of us that are still coaching, but not that many that have been in the sport this long. Um, I also am a Czech holistic lifestyle coach. And that came about after 2007, when I had my daughter in 2006, I basically ran my body into the ground and I had to find a solution because I actually had to give up the sport of triathlon for almost 18 months. And that led to a whole series of depression and, you know, not feeling good about myself because I wasn't doing what I was wanting to do. And I was able to heal myself through this program, my holistic lifestyle coaching. Um, so I learned, and now I've included this in my triathlon coaching program. So I've almost, I've coached thousands of athletes and I've almost done 300 races. Um, and I have four coaches that work with me at Full Circle Coaching. I started this company, Full Circle Coaching, in 2010, and 2020 was supposed to be my 10-year, or is my 10-year anniversary. Um, we're not able to have the big bang-out party that I was hoping for, but um, we're still here, and we're thriving, and we're still growing. Um, but I have also, you know, we coach locally, and I have lots of athletes worldwide, right? The internet allows that to happen. Um, and I actually have, you know, local programs, I have online programs, and I'm actually going to announce at the end of this, this uh, talk, my new signature triathlon transformation program. So hang on to the end. And I also do uh, um, camps, triathlon coaching camps, um, which we'll get to as well. So this is a picture of my group. Even in during COVID, we did meet on my birthday. It was a special occasion. So in August, we got together, but check out that water, that sunrise, right? That's what we get to be around down here in Miami. So let's get right to it. So what is speed? The, ho the whole purpose of this talk is to get faster, right? So what is speed? The rate at which someone is able to move. And it was some, someone or something, but for us, it's someone, right? But it's relative to so many factors. There are so many factors that we have to consider, right? It's not just deciding to be faster. We actually have to do a lot of little things to get the job done. So. It's a, this, the 11 ways is a combination of actually things that you can buy because <laughs> you can buy speed, but it's also a lot of theory um, and mindset and practical um, application, okay? So number one, you have to have the intention, the desire, and then the belief that it's even possible, right? So I love this quote from Henry Ford, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're 100% right. So, you know, I work with my athletes every day and sometimes we're preparing for a race or a hard workout or a test even. And what happens is they're like, oh, a test or oh, and they come into it negative. So if you're already starting in that place, you know, you're gonna be right about the outcome, right? So if you come at it with a belief of it's possible, it's doable, I got this, the outcome is much more likely to be that as opposed to maybe the unsureness or the negative outcome, right? So your desire is a strong feeling of what you want. You have to have something you wish for, you want to happen. And it should also be a stretch, right? So when I'm asking my athletes to set their goals, you know, doing maybe crossing the finish line, that's the first goal in becoming a triathlete. But after that, there's so many more goals that we can set, you know, to get faster. And then that belief has to be a component, right? So a lot of times it's hard to change your belief. You, you might have some programming from when you were a child or something that happened to you before that maybe you never were able to achieve, right? But if you can think the same thing over and over again in a positive way, it's amazing how you can actually change your beliefs, right? 
So I'm a huge fan of I am statements and I have a whole two pages of them that I pull from almost on a daily basis and I suggest to my athletes all the time. Um, and we set these goals and then we imagine that it's already happened, right? It's already a reality. The feeling that you're gonna get when you cross that finish line or become that, uh, run that 5K in less than 20 minutes or um, become that Ironman, you have to embody those feelings now because if you don't, the journey can be long, okay? Especially to Ironman. There's gonna be days that you don't wanna do what's asked of you. And if you don't have these statements or these things in your pocket that you can pull on and kind of reset your programming in your mind, there's a good chance you might not end up where you wanna be across that finish line or being a 20 mile per hour, you know, or 200 watt cyclist, right? So I am statements for me are a daily thing. And honestly, you know, all the time I'm pulling on that. Um, so I am, and you can be creative. It can be a, a wonderful mother. It doesn't have to be just about sport, but these things are awesome as far as changing your belief system. And you really wanna tap into how you're gonna feel when you accomplish the goal and imagine that's already happened. And the more senses that you can pull in when you start to imagine seeing, smelling, tasting, feeling what it's gonna feel like, the more likely you're gonna to lead to that success, okay? So number two, take action. So we can write down on a piece of paper. <laughs> I asked you guys to put out some paper. So maybe you, you set that goal already, right? You already have the goal of that Olympic try in November, or maybe the Ironman, maybe the Ironman's coming up for you. We still, we still have a couple races that are happening. And just thinking about it, unfortunately, not gonna happen. <laughs> we actually have to do something, right? So an object got at rest stays at rest and an object in motion stays in motion. And I can tell you that is never more true with a triathlete that comes from like maybe not as much of a background of exercise. And then once they train for that first triathlon, it's like they're ready to, for the next one, right? They, they have created this motion in their body to continue and keep going. In my 23 years of coaching, I've only had one person cross the finish line in a triathlon and say, and never go on to do another one. Only one out of thousands of triathletes. So, and that, the only reason that happened with him is because he actually didn't train enough to get across the finish line feeling good, right? So he suffered so much. He's like, oh, I never want to do that again. You know, so that was, you know, kind of, it was kind of just one of those situations, but one out of all those athletes, it's pretty impressive. Most of the time you love moving and you want to keep moving. So the idea is to assess where you are and go from there. Like for all the athletes in my program, we do evaluations, we do testing and we do video analysis because we're always trying to assess the baseline and then improve from there. And we have these baseline parameters and we retest and reevaluate every six to eight weeks. And what happens, the motivation is insane. I mean, I, my, one of my core principles is Kaizen, which is a Japanese saying for constant steady improvement. Um, and I live that and practice that in my own life. And I do that with all of my athletes. And it's just amazing. I mean, I had a, an athlete last night at the pool. Um, he was swimming his hundreds in over three minutes. And he just did his 200 swim test in sub two minute per hundred pace. Um, and that's a huge breakthrough when you've been training that hard, right? So that just doing that test has now motivated him for his, to, to accomplish his half Ironman, which is gonna happen in three weeks, right? So these testings and these evaluations are great ways to get re-motivated and reignited um, to take the next step. And remember, we wanna focus on progress, not perfection. Triathlon is not one of those things that you can just show up and do it the next day. Honestly, the sprint, I mean, I can, I can definitely say the sprint, if you had to, most people that are, are in somewhat good shape, they could do it, right? They could maybe dog paddle to swim, you know, maybe, um, you, know, you know, pedal the bike and, and walk, run if they had to and cross the finish line. But it does take some, you know, six to eight weeks is usually my recommendation for a sprint try. Um, but the longer races, you can't wing it, right? You have to put in the time. You can't buy your way across the finish line. I've had plenty of athletes try to do that as well. So we want to focus on the progress and the journey along the way, as opposed to the perfection of it. So this is just a slide that I created to help me and my athletes kind of move through the evolution of becoming a more experienced triathlete. So getting started, I have people that come to me with no experience, acquiring experience, maybe has, is strong in one sport, but wants to get good and cross the finish line in a triathlon. 
um, gaining momentum, level three, maybe done a few sprints and ready for Olympic. And then ready for more is 70.3, maybe getting on the podium, doing an Ironman. And then level five is really, really serious and committed and ready to take it to the next level. And you can be in a sprint triathlon and, and be aiming for level five. Um, a lot of people don't give sprint triathletes a cre enough credit, um, but I'm a sprint triathlete and I love it. And I train hard every day almost. And um, I work hard for it, right? So don't, it's not dependent on the distance of the race. So number three way to get faster, skills. And this is one that I see a lot of coaches completely neglecting, okay? So they ramp up the volume of the swim. You know, they ramp up the volume of the bike. They ramp up the volume of the run. They're running three times a week in each sport, but their form is terrible. They don't even know how to run properly. They're not comfortable on their bike. They don't have a bike fit. They, you know, the swim form is terrible and they're splashing and slogging and, and just muscling through. The more you swim, the more you bike, the more you run, you don't get better. You need to learn how, okay? And the more you don't know how, the more energy you're wasting, right? So if you really wanna improve, you know, less volume and more purposeful training is the way to go, 100%. So nothing replaces better skills. So running more does not make you faster, it actually makes you injured, right? So the better your form, the faster your potential to move through space and time. This is a picture of us at um, Claremont at our ultimate tri camp, but we're doing skills and drills. Even my best level athletes are constantly working on their skills. There's never an end in sight to that. You know, Michael Phelps, every time he would get in the pool, he, didn't, he always worked on his form to become a better swimmer. That never ended through his, out his entire career, okay? So stretching and mobility. This is also one that's completely overlooked um, a lot of the time. I mean, if you do not have the flexibility, so, so mobility is flexibility through a range of motion, okay? So if you don't have the minimum amount of mobility, which I have tests for, for the swim, the bike, and the run, you're never going to be as fast as you could be because you're only always going to be limited by that um, lack of range of motion. Okay. So stretching and mobility have to be a part of your program. Um, for the swim, it's about being as streamlined as possible so that you can slip through the water. For the bike, it's about being able to hold that aerodynamic position if you're on a, a tri bike. Um, and then for running, it's about hip flexibility, ankle flexibility, and posture, right? So this slide for the swim, I have athletes that take years to be able to get into this position because they're like this, right? They're so tight in their thoracic spine, maybe sitting all day, you know, hands here on the phone, head forward. They cannot get into the streamline, right? Um, and the hips here is the most important place to be able to have straight as well as the ankles. The most common limiters in the swim are flex feet, bent knees, bent hips, and then rounded shoulders and bent arms, okay? This will make you faster than any workout, okay? The more you can easily you can slip through the water, the faster you can go. Now on the bike, I mean, if you can't hold this position because your hamstrings are too tight and keep your heel down because your, your, your calves are too tight and your hips are too op not open enough, you're not gonna be able to produce power around the pedal stroke or even hold this aerodynamic position because your neck maybe is too tight, right? And be able to look down the road. Um, so this is really an awesome profile of someone slipping through the air with ease on their tri bike. And can you imagine if you could hold that position, you will be going so much faster with so much less effort, right? And then finally on the run, you know, toes up, leaning backwards, head up in the air. Like sometimes these are just habits that people have, but it's also lack of range of motion. Like most of the time, you know, the hips are so tight that there's a, the booties out and they can't extend the hip, right? So one of the biggest things I work on with my athletes is extending this hip using stretching, okay? So those are just a few ways that stretching is super important. All right, number five, this is where equipment comes in. So, <laughs> so tri suit, speed suit, or wetsuit. So a lot of times, especially beginner triathletes, they show up and they don't really know what to wear, but nothing's better than a one piece tri suit and one with sleeves actually is really, really the fastest. Um, and better than a two piece, right? But you have to also weigh if you're gonna do an Ironman, 
and if you have to go to the bathroom a lot because to take this off you have to undo the zipper so that's definitely something to think about <laughs> so sometimes a two-piece is in order but for speed if you want to go faster the one-piece tri suit is definitely the way to go and then wetsuits or speed suits so what's the difference a speed suit is very thin it's like the um, paper thin almost and it repels water so when you swim with a speed suit on you would swim with it over your tri suit um, whether that's a one piece or a two piece tri suit and it actually allows you to go much much faster just because the water is being repelled as you go through the water now the wetsuit also makes you faster faster than if you swam with just a, a bikini or a one piece bathing suit you're always faster with flotation so there's two wetsuit options, sleeveless or sleeved. You're faster with a sleeved wetsuit, um, but they do cause more restriction. So if, you, if you're you know, subject to panic attacks or if you don't pull up the sleeves all the way, that can be a problem and you won't be able to go as fast as your potential, but you definitely need to train in your wetsuit. You cannot get away with showing up at a race and not having been in your wet. I mean, you can, but you won't swim as fast as you could if you had trained in the wetsuit. Okay, so speed suits, wetsuits, and you have to have under 78 degrees and sometimes under 76 degrees, depending on the race venue, the ITU races. Okay, so this one, we're going to do some stuff together. I hope you guys are wanting to play along with me. But breathing, so breathing is a huge one that's also been overlooked. Okay, so a typical human is supposed to take about, 30, I think it's like 26,000 breaths a day. And Americans tend to take way more, <laughs> right? Because we're always talking really fast. I'm totally guilty of this. Talking really fast, taking short, shallow breaths. And then I'm wondering why I'm so like anxious and amped up, right? So taking the time every morning and every night, I do 10 super deep belly breaths where I breathe into my belly button and my low back, then my rib cage, and then my upper chest and my upper back. So there's actually like three quadrants to your breath. And you want to think about them, uh, the breathing, that you're feeling um, puffy butterfly wings, is like I, I like to call it, because your lungs actually come up as high as your shoulders, and they go down as low as your belly button to the side where your ribs are. So the more oxygen that's coming into your body, the more you can push harder and go faster with a lower heart rate, and it'll feel easier, okay? So let's go ahead and practice for a second, if you guys are willing to. So I would love for you to just put your hand right on top of your belly button and you can do this in a seated position or standing, um, but lying down is my favorite, right? So I do this every day and I want you to close your eyes. And if you can, I want you to breathe in through your nose, okay? Close your eyes and follow your breath all the way down to where your belly button is. And imagine your belly button area inside is filling up with air like sand, okay? And then you're gonna exhale and your belly button's gonna come in and your air is gonna come back up your spine and then out your nose. Let's do that two more times. You're gonna inhale through your nose and think about the air going down into your belly and filling up your lower belly and your low back area. And you should even feel your hand move away from your spine or you know, move out like a big Buddha belly. And then exhale, pull it back in. Let's do that one more time. Inhale, fill it up and exhale. And you can exhale out of your mouth or your nose. And then the next place I want you to think about, I'm going to tilt my camera down so you guys can see me. Or actually, I have to stand up higher. But um, you're going to put your hands right on top of your rib cage and actually let your fingertips touch each other. Okay? And as you inhale, I want you to let your hands move apart because you're filling up your lungs laterally. Okay? So you're going to inhale and let your, lung, your lungs expand and your fingertips move apart from each other and then exhale and let them come back together. So inhale, move apart. Good, I can feel my heart beating and exhale. Good, let's do one more, inhale. Good. And the last place I wanna think about is your upper chest. A lot of times this part is actually the most stuck on people because they're, they're hunched over all day long, right? So doing some back bends on the foam roller can really loosen up this area. But go ahead and put your hand on your chest and think about filling your air up for your belly first. Then it's filling up your lungs and your rib cage. And then finally, you should be able to ex expand through your upper chest and upper back and then exhale everything down. Let's do that one more time. Close your eyes, inhale through your nose, fill up your belly, your rib cage, 
your upper chest, upper back, and open your mouth, make a noise. <sighs> All right, hope you guys feel better. So breath work is amazing. I mean, just to give you a quick aside, yesterday I had a terrible headache and I don't like to take Advil or anything like that. So I just went outside, I laid in the grass underneath my big oak tree and I did some breath work, um, some Wim Hof breathing that I like to do. Um, and within about 30 minutes, my headache was gone and it had been there for about four hours. So breath work is amazing for many, many different things, but especially if you wanna get faster. Okay. Strength training, we cannot overlook strength training. So this is also something that most triathletes do not include. And you can actually do less volume on your swim, your bike, and your run if you're including your strength training because you just have more reserves, more muscle contraction, more strength in the muscle to power you through those endurance workouts. And it's amazing how, especially over COVID, when I you know, wasn't going outside as much and when I wasn't training as much that I was doing my strength training, and when I went back to it, felt so good, even though I hadn't been doing the longer volume, right? The other thing that's super important about strength training is your stability around your joints. So most injuries come because your joint is not strong because the muscles around the joint are not strong, okay? So if you want to avoid potential injuries, strength training is absolutely mandatory. And I always love the saying, you cannot fire a cannon from a canoe, right? So if your core is weak, there is no way that you're gonna be able to propel your body through space and time um, quickly if you're loosey-goosey in the middle, right? You wanna be strong in your core so your arms and legs can move around your core to move you through the water. All right, I'm just gonna go back and check international distance in November. Is that the game on race, Monica, I think? Okay, cool, first place. Yeah. Okay, yeah. awesome, okay, good. So I love, like, the other thing about the gold is getting specific, right? I like this. Lionel, he, uh, you know, he's from Guatemala. He wants to get first place in his age group in Olympic distance triathlon. That's a stretch, right? That's something to reach for, okay? So, <laughs> I'm getting confused. Um, have a good day. Okay, someone had to leave. Okay, cool. Oh, the Daytona Challenge, cool. All right, cool. So, I'll see some of you guys at the um, Game On race for sure. Okay, cool. Okay, we're at number eight. So this is where you can kind of buy some speed, okay? So aerodynamic equipment is super duper helpful. And this is not for the beginner triathlete. I don't recommend being a very first time triathlete and going out and spending $10,000 on equipment, but you certainly can, and you will go faster for it. <laughs> but it is a lot of money a lot of times. So believe it or not, an aero helmet gives you more speed than aerodynamic wheels. And that a lot of people don't believe that, but it's true. It's proven in the wind tunnel because your body makes up most of the drag on your bike. So if your head is completely encased and you have a really good aerodynamic helmet, you will actually produce less drag on your bike to go through the air, right? So definitely want to make sure it fits well because it can be very restricting. And you see how there's like no vents, right? So if you have a super hot race, you want to be careful on having a two arrow helmet that doesn't have enough air coming in because your heat escapes through your head and it can cause problems, okay? But notice the windshield, the, the glasses, those are all, everything is meant for speed and to cut through the, through space and time with, um, you know, less drag. Um, aero bars and tri bike, right? If you're wanting to get faster and you're on a road bike, if you switch to a tri bike, you can get a good mile per hour faster with no difference in your effort. Okay. Good case in point. I did a race. I did the same race, um, in one in July and then one in September. And I used my road bike for the first try and I used my tri bike for the second try. And my fitness was pretty much the same. And I was a good two mile per hour faster just because I was on my tri bike. Because again, your tri bike allows you to get down on your aero bars. And again, you're less, you know, there's less drag because you're lower in a more pro low profile position. The bladed tubing usually helps. There's usually components where they put the, the cables inside. All those things add up to make you faster, right? So I have a BMC, so I love my bike, but you can see the geometry of it. It's meant to slice through the air, okay? Um, in an upcoming slide, um, aerodynamic wheels, right? So this is called a disc wheel. This wheel can give you a lot of speed. It's like a sail. So when the wind is, as long as the wind is less than 20 miles per hour, you can actually sail your bike 
And if you have a crosswind, you'll go even faster, okay? So this is called a dish, like a deeper dish on a, an aerodynamic wheel, and then this is called a disc wheel. But you can see how fast this bike is and how low in profile you can get on this bike. Okay, bike fit, big one, right? So I did a, a video last week <laughs> about what I see when I ride outside. Number one, I see people with no helmet on, which is the please, please, please do not get on your bike if you don't have your helmet. That's just number one rule. But number two is make sure your bike fits you. Most people think you're supposed to be in pain when you ride, like in your crotch or your neck, right? You're not supposed to be in pain. You're supposed to be comfortable and not be rocking side to side or pointing your toes. Those are two things for sure that a bike fit can definitely help you with. But also if your feet are going numb, if your hands are going numb, these are all things that can be adjusted from a bike fit. The more flexible you are, the better your bike potentially can fit you and the more aerodynamic you can get. So that's going back to that flexibility and mobility thing. But bike fit is worth every single dollar. If you're gonna spend money on a bike, you definitely need a bike fit. So we do tons of bike fits, that's Coach Dennis. In my opinion, he is the best bike fitter in town because he's a triathlete and a cyclist, a very, very strong, fast one. And he knows what it takes to get comfortable first. And then if they want to get more aerodynamic, they can. And we work with you until you have that perfect fit. Uh, Miguel is just one example of he really, really improved once he got his bike fit. He came to me with knee pain and had all kinds of issues. And we got him all dialed in on his bike fit, among other things. And he was able to go on and... Um, do a few iron, one Ironman and a few half Ironman successfully, pain-free. Um, all right, we're at number 10. We're almost there, almost to 11. Faster transitions. So this one, you do not, it's so easy to get faster at transitions. So one of those things that you can do, it's just a skill that you need to practice. Leaving your bike, your, your, your bike shoes clipped in on your bike, whether it's a road bike or a tri bike, can save you a ton of time in your transition. And you just have to practice getting on and off your bike with your shoes on the pedals, right? And also leaving your shoes on the pedals as you dismount, right? It's a huge, huge savings in times. I love it when, especially like newer triathletes, they look at their, their transition times. And if they had just done like a, a reasonable fast time, they could have actually been on the podium, right? So transitions are definitely something to train. But in order to have a good transition, you do need tri shoes because sometimes the bike shoes have three straps and a tri shoe typically only has one or two. This is my absolute favorite tri shoe. It's a little pricey, but I feel like it's like flip flops for the bike. It has so much air coming in and out of it. This little part back here actually folds back and there's a magnet that holds it down. And I just leave my shoes right on the bike and I put my feet right into the shoes and I'm pedaling while I'm leaving transition. So I'm saving time in that area. I did a video, I think I have it um, on my uh, YouTube channel, and it's called uh, Triathlon Transitions. And I demonstrate how to get on and off my bike with my bike shoes already clipped in. So it's definitely something to learn. You can also go, you know, type it into YouTube and find a million different videos. But also, these are just a couple more things that you can invest in to, to have a faster transition or have a faster race. So an aero water bottle, so what that allows you to is have your water bottle between your aero bars right up top so that you're not reaching down to grab your water when you need to drink. You literally just take a straw and when you need to drink, you're there. You don't have to sit up. You don't have to reach back behind you or do anything. You can stay really safe, right? It tucked in your aero position and drink. A race belt. So that's something that you wear around your, rate, around your waist when you race. Um, and you can put gels in there. So that can save time as far as carrying your nutrition with you on the run. And then elastic laces and no socks for the run. Um, you know, no socks on the, on the bike too. I, highly, I don't race ever with socks. I don't do long course racing really anymore. I do half Ironman aqua bikes, but that's it. But I don't wear socks ever, unless it's cold. But I, I don't really go to cold races anymore. So, <laughs> but no socks is definitely something you can learn. I also have a video on how to do that using baby powder and Vaseline and just lining your, your shoes with baby powder and non-petroleum Vaseline, just so you, your, your foot gets used to having no socks on so you don't get a blister. You never wanna try that on race day. That's not a good idea. You will most likely get a blister with some blood. Okay, number 11, of course, the obvious one. <laughs> Follow a proven system. Okay, you guys, 
guess what? I have one. I have many, right? So a coach and a coaching program is one of the most cost-effective ways to get faster as a triathlete, right? Investing in a good coach will get you where you want to be much faster than if you do it on your own. I'm not saying you can't do it on your own. It's totally possible, but you have to be pretty self-motivated and kind of have to know all these details about three different sports for triathlon when this coach could potentially save you so much more time. So education and getting you to where you want to be faster is all about speed, right? So a good coaching program, it creates, it, it fits into your life, right? So it's something that's totally doable. It's um, proven strategies, community and support and accountability and motivation. And remember that whole thing about progress, not perfection. And it's a journey, right? And the cool thing about it is it's, a, you, in my community, we're a tri, I call us a tribe, right? We're a family and we motivate each other from WhatsApp. Like it's a crazy how much motivation we get from our WhatsApp group, right? So this is my brand new program. I wanted to mention it here. And then I'm going to give you guys some time to have a Q&A. But this is my brand new program. I'm only taking 10 people for the very first one. So this program is culminating after 23 years of triathlon coaching and my holistic lifestyle coaching program. I've decided to combine them both in a real system to help you get faster, stronger, and across that finish line or whatever the goal is for you in less time. So it's different from the programs that I have now because all the coaching we do is either live in person or through training peaks. This program is actually going to have video teaching every single week that you are going to be having to go into and learning the process. There was always a gap for me, with me and my athletes, especially um, online. The ones that I'm local with, I can definitely get my hands on them and work with them. Whereas this program does that, but all virtually, okay? So it's my new baby. I'm super excited to roll it out. This is just some of the stuff that's included. And I would love to talk to you if you're interested about it, but these are some of the benefits that you get if you join the program. And today is not about this program, but it's about the ways to get faster. And also if you're interested in moving forward with me in some coaching. So I'm going to be sending you an email with my triathlon breakthrough session link. And basically that's 30 minutes. That's a link that you can make an appointment with me and you can spend 30 minutes of time with me. Um, and we can talk about anything, right? So we can talk about where you are as what level triathlete you are, level one through five, and where you need to go to accomplish that next goal. Um, do you guys have any questions? You can unmute yourself if you do. Anybody, anybody, no questions? <laughs> Not really, I loved it, but uh, I guess no, no questions now. Okay, cool. Is that Isabel? Thank you. Yeah. Okay, it's cool. Me. <laughs> awesome. Oh, Hans raised his hand. Here we go. Here we go. Hans, can you unmute yourself? Hi. Hi. Um, can, I, can I have the information for the fitting guy? For oh, the yeah. Yes, Dennis Phipps. He's amazing. So I can send you that, his information. He's local in town. But we've actually done bike fits virtually as well um, with the geometry and the, me the measuring of the angles. You can take a video of yourself on your trainer or have someone take a video of, of yourself from the side, from the front, and from the back. And we can help you position all your angles on the bike to help you be more comfortable on your bike and actually perform better. Hans, I will get that to you. Um, okay, cool. There it is. There, okay, Dennis will contact you. Got it. Okay, anybody else? Anybody else? Question? Hey, Erin. Yes. I have a question. Hey, Jennifer, how are you? Hey, good. How are you? Good. You look so pretty. Good. Yeah, thanks. I'm outside. <laughs> it looks awesome. I love, that, I love that you only do warm weather things now. You're like, I never wear socks. <laughs> Why suffer when you don't have to? <laughs> That's great. That's great. Um, on that last slide, when you explained your program, yeah. is it six months long? And is there a different, are there two different options? Or could you just go over that a little bit? Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah. So yeah. basically what it is, is it's 16 weeks for, it's a four month program for short course. Okay. okay. So for sprint and Olympic, it's a four month program, but for Ironman, half Ironman and Ironman, I need six months. There's no, uh, okay. Yeah, there's no way I can get you what you need to have your best performance, pain-free, injury-free, personal best in less than six months for Ironman. Does that make sense? 
Yeah, got it. So it depends on the race that you're going for. Exactly. And okay. a, lot of, a lot of people will start with the 16 weeks, right? And they'll get through a sprint and Olympic and maybe do that one or two times. And then they move on into the six month program. Gotcha. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, cool. Yeah. And it's really awesome. Like as far as, like I said, it really covers everything triathlete, all my 23 years of triathlon experience, but it's also including all the lifestyle coaching. And for me, that's what's allowed me to do this sport for 23 years and still be so excited about it. And, and I'm 100% injury free at the age of 50, right? When I, and I started this sport in 26 years old. So, you know, these, pro, these processes work and I've seen them work in so many of my athletes that have come to me with injuries and it's so possible to move through them and get to the place where they want to be, right? But it takes time. It takes time. There is a commitment. I think that's so important because that would, that would be my biggest fear of like, oh, but I, I'll get injured. Right. Yes. Yeah, so, so that's, that's amazing what... that you're injury free all those years. <laughs> I know. Now I haven't been, I of course have had my share of injuries, but what's so cool is I now under, I mean, we always overreach, right? As a triathlete, you're, you've got to have some type of type A in you anyway. Um, but you, it's, it's uh, overreaching in a good way so that you get better, but not overdoing it to the point of injury. And that's what I teach you. That's what I teach you in the program, how to do that, how that process works. And that's where the strength, the strength thing. The, the breathing, all that stuff comes together in this program to get you where you want to be in this perfect place, right? Well, thanks. Good question. Awesome. Good question. Thank you. <laughs> thanks. All right. Anybody else, you guys? Yeah, I don't know. It's worse. Hey. Hey, I, uh, I'm intrigued about what you said about the aero helmet. Oh, yeah, right? <laughs> and the uh, no socks transition. You know, I do socks. And uh, in sprint, of course, you lose a lot of time. And I think in my Olympic, uh, you also still lose quite a bit of time. You do. So I'm wondering it's, if you could talk, just talk about that a little bit, those two components. Aero helmet, which just makes you more streamlined on the yes, bike, less definitely. energy, you know, mm -hmm. better run later, that kind of uh, thing. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so the aero helmet, the models have changed over the years. Um, when they first started coming out with the aero helmet, it's so funny because everybody looked like a bird. Like the t they would have a tail coming out, like a foot, and, and athletes would turn their heads and we all looked like birds. It was so funny. But they discovered that that actually isn't as fast as a shorter truncated uh, tail on the, uh, the helmet. And they actually use, you know how a golf ball is dented and has those little ridges? Yeah. They actually put that dimpling on the aero helmets now because they realize it helps you move through space and time faster. So, I mean, there's a bunch of different brands. Rudy Project, Full Circle Athletes get a discount. Um, so that's usually the brand that I recommend and they're a great deal. So you, or as, as a member, you know where the discount codes are. Yeah. Um, but that, that is one of the best helmets and investments you can get if you want to get faster. I mean, that's easy. I know it's buying speed, but hey. <laughs> If you're in the sport and you want to spend some money, like we all do as triathletes, I mean, the helmet is the way to go. Now, socks, no socks on, this, on, the, on the, the bike and the run. On the bike, it's super easy because you don't have as much friction, right? Because mm -hmm. you're you're, you tend to, well, you come out of the water and your feet are wet. So what I do to prevent blisters is I dump a bunch of baby powder inside the, the cycling shoe when I do my transition setup. So that when I come out of the water, I try to wipe my feet off as much as possible. If there's grass, I'll even take a little um, a washcloth to the race and I'll just have it hanging on my bike. So I come in and I'll just dust off my feet real quick and then I'll run out with my bike and put my, slide my feet right into the bike shoes. And because of the baby powder, it absorbs any moisture that would cause an, a blister. Mm -hmm. um, you can also potentially prevent an, uh, a blister if you know you're rubbing in a particular place in your shoe, your bike shoe or your run shoe you would actually put a little glob of Vaseline in there, not on your foot, but inside the shoe. So if the, if the skin is rubbing against the shoe and the Vaseline is there, you will not get a blister. Mm -hmm. It'll slip inside and it'll last a good hour. Um, so I don't get any blisters ever anymore just because my feet are used to it. Um, but it's super duper fast transition when you don't have to deal with those socks. Putting dry socks on wet feet is a chore because <laughs> yeah, yeah. you can you can tug and pull um but if you're determined to wear socks i, I recommend putting the um, baby powder actually in the socks because mm -hmm. at least then they'll be able to to um to slide on better okay, all right yeah. does that help yeah totally look into yeah. it 
So, so as far as your race, you do have a couple weeks before your race that you could potentially do at least the bike for sure with no socks. So why don't we start that right now? I was thinking about it that maybe, well, yeah. And yeah, exactly. And I need to get a new pair of shoes. As well. Okay. Yeah. So those are things, all investments where you can maybe buy some speed. Yeah. Okay. And then what do you think of, uh, to train? Oh, so, okay. So indoor training. Good question, Lana. So especially with COVID, we were not, we're, we were not allowed to go outside. So having a trainer, a bike trainer is a great way to get faster. Okay. Because you're not dealing with traffic. You're not having to stop and start according to cars going by or street lights. You can get on and off your bike in 45 minutes and have a better workout than if you were outside for an hour and a half just because you're not having the distractions of life on the road. So there's two companies that are out there, Zwift and Ruby, and they both have different attributes. Zwift kind of came on the market sooner and it's kind of like a cartoon land. And Ruby is more realistic and actually has actual race courses like USA Triathlon actual race courses like Ironman race courses. So there are definitely pluses and minuses to both. The cool thing is, is I, my program, Training Peaks, I can actually put a workout in your calendar and you can get on to your trainer and upload um, the workout that I give you and you can do it inside the virtual bike world of Ruby or Zwift. So it's very, very cool. And this new program for all the athletes that are gonna be doing it online, we will have group workouts on the bike indoors. So that's part of the program. Good question, Leno. Okay, thanks, Brandon. Great to meet you. I don't know you, so I look forward to talking to you soon. And then shoes, you said there was a brand. Oh yeah, so I love the specialized <laughs> Aero Tri Shoe. I mean, I'm not gonna say it's not, it's, it's super expensive. I think it's like $400, but <laughs> honestly, I had my pair for 15 years. So the investment was 100% there and they were by far the most a comfortable tri shoe that I've ever had. I actually still have them, but they're so beat up. They're so beat up that I decided to buy a new pair that was like kind of clean and looking more svelte, but I still love my old ones, the, the specialized brand. All right, good questions, you guys. Good questions. Okay, I think that's it. All hey, right, Aaron, well, yeah. Can I ask one more thing? Sure. So if I wanted to get more info, um, and I know we're up for time now, is there a way that I could get on a phone call with one of your coaches or you about yes. your program? Yeah, definitely. So right after this, we're going to get the recording, which usually takes about 15 minutes. So I'm going to get the recording link and then I'm going to send you an email and you're going to have a link there. It's called my triathlon breakthrough session. Um, so you're going to get a link there to my appointment core and there are only a couple spots in there, but I opened it up for all of this week and the rest of this week and all of next week. So you can get on there and it's a 30 minute session. You need to have, you know, time committed to me. So, and we can brainstorm what level you are at, what your next step is, and if we're a fit to work together. That awesome. sound good? Okay, so cool. You're gonna, email, you're gonna email that to us. Yes, I'm gonna email it to okay. you right now. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, I think that's Thank it, you. you guys. All right, well, thanks so much for being here. It was awesome talking to you. And I'm planning on doing stuff like this, you know, all the time on a monthly basis. But please follow me on social media. I do uh, Facebook uh, live posts on Instagram um, at least twice a week. And then I'm also, I have a Facebook group called Triathlon Obsessed, where I do some live coaching in there as well. And I'm always posting fun stuff. Um, so Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. I have an awesome YouTube channel that has over 100 videos. I'm very proud of all those videos. Great information on all different sorts of topics and some of the ones I mentioned in this talk as well. Okay, you guys? All right, awesome. Have a great day. Thanks for being here. Wishing you well. Thank you. Bye.